Hi, I wanted to record a little video that describes how Lucy's contacts work. This is a source of some confusion, uh, and it, but actually it's an incredibly powerful feature of Lucy. So one of the things that I've done is downloaded the Express Edition because we can edit it very quickly, uh, but this goes for all versions of Lucy. Um, I'll be showing using Tomcat, but if you're using uh, another server container, there's slightly different steps, but the concepts remain the same. Let's have a look at a local installation of Lucy. So I've installed Lucy here. Uh, let me get it started. It was already starting. Let's uh, clear that up. Uh, let's start Lucy. So you go to Lucy and do, do startup.sh. It'll take a little time. Some debugging output will come out. One thing that you can see is that there's a server context. It's already been defined here. So always look out where it is. And it's actually telling you exactly where it is. So that's a server context. And then Lucy will have one or more web contexts. And here's one web context. This is its unique ID. It's probably a hash of the path or something like that. And it's got a hash and a label and stuff like that. Well, let's have a look what it is. So let's go now to, let's go to localhost 8888. And we can see here's our installation of Lucy. And it does your first steps, wiki. You can do the server and web admin. So if we now go to the, uh, click that, you can see that we have Lucy admin server.cfm and web.cfm. Neither has a password at the moment by default. So let's put a password in there. It's asking me for defaults, whatever. Let's submit a password. Don't want to remember it. No, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so here's the server administrator. The server administrator will manage this whole installation of Lucy and Tomcat and basically set the defaults that any other website or web context will follow. You can do many things in here which are separate from the web. One of them is restart uh, Lucy. So for example, you can do restart here. You can add SSL certificates because they're for the whole Tomcat engine or the whole servlet container. You can also do update it. So for example, here's set to releases. Let's have a look if there's a snapshot. Let's uh, see if there's a snapshot available. Uh, and there is. Look, we could install that. Um, and essentially, you, anything you do here go pushes down as a default for all the web contexts. So for example, let's look at something that's trivial. Let's say it's regional. Let's say at the moment it says English United States. Well, obviously, I don't like that. So let's put English United Kingdom. The time zone is uh, Greenwich Mean Time. But let's say I'm building an application that's actually for uh, clients in the States. So let's see, we can do maybe United States, US, uh, Eastern, there you go, Eastern Standard Time, for example, I can change this. And it'll ask me to wait for a second. And that saved it. Uh, if we now go to the web, again, we have to put in a password, here's my default password. And all my password managers will also ask to save it. No, thank you. Um, and now here's the web version, which actually tells it's your location. So this is actually what's going to be served. So the settings here do not affect any other websites, they only affect this website. And if we look at the regional, for example, we had United Kingdom, Eastern Standard Time as a default. And it tells you the server date and time and the Lucy date and time. In other words, for this server. This whole idea was to separate what the configuration of an actual server, physical server is, compared to each application that runs on Lucy. Now, for example, if you've got a one website one, and you have website two, which are completely separate websites, you don't want the, either the administrators nor the users to get the same settings for those two different websites. So the easy way to do it is separate it with webs. So let's have a more concrete example. I have set up a couple of local domains and let's see website one.dev actually goes to this default Lucy installation. But if I had another website two, uh, it points to exactly the same installation. And we might want to change that because obviously we might have to want to have two different installations. Where can you do that? Let's have a look at the files. So when you install Lucy, whether it's an Express Edition or a Server Edition, you, shall, you would see this kind of general setup. So what you'd have is a conf uh, folder, which is all your configuration. And in there, you'll have a server and a web XML. So if we now look at the server XML, you can see here that you have, it's, it's a fairly long file, let's go through it a little bit. It tells which 
port the server is running on. This is not the HTTP port or anything like that. This is a communication port that you can tell it uh, to shut down, for example, on this 8005. If we go down, there is some listeners. So you've got memory leak, application lifecycle, etc. You don't have to worry about those. Uh, and then you've got the service called Catalina, which you might notice around the place. And here we have a couple of things. So first off, we have the connector, which is at port 8888, which is essentially the HTTP connector, as it says here, protocol HTTP. So this is how Lucy is managing to, to communicate with the world. We also have an AJP connector down here at port 8009. Uh, AJP is a Apache um, Jakarta protocol, I think. Um, I'm going to wrong send, put messages below to tell me how wrong I am. But basically, it's a binary protocol between the, the Apache web server and Tomcat. So it's a much faster protocol than HTTP. But it's exactly the same thing. You can just think of it as the same protocol. If you call on this, it would return a page, right? Um, and then we have the engine, which is Catalina, and the host is the default host, is local host. And if you go down a little bit more, Let's, no need for the realm, don't worry about that for the moment. You can see that the host that we're, we're hosting is localhost. So any request that comes here will go to that, right? Uh, which is actually pointing to, by default, if my memory serves correct, to web apps root. Let's say we want to put our sites here. Let's put site website one, and we're going to put another folder called uh, website two. So in here, uh, I already started it, so I already started up. But let's uh, tell you what. Let's delete it so you can see what it what it actually happens. So we have website two. Let's put a new folder called website one. And in those, let's just show them that they're they are new websites and they're uh, serving Lucy. So index.cfm. Let's go website one, and let's output some some CFML so that we know that it's working. Do the same thing for website two. And call that website two and probably spell that a little bit better. Ooh. Got distracted. There we go. OK, so now we have our two different web applications. Uh, the next part is to actually add a new host. I have one that I prepared earlier. So here we go. Here's a new host. Let's keep the tabbing a little bit nicer. So here's a new host of website dev1, and I can actually put an alias, in other words, www. So it means that Apache, whenever the domain comes in, that is website1, it will go to this path. So if we, we can do a similar one, let's change it. So we're going to have whenever website2 comes in, and it has W, an alias of website two, if you want it, we're going to be serving this stuff from this path. You can think of these as virtual hosts. So let's go and restart Tom, Tomcat. Let's clear it just so we have a nice way. Start that up. And now you'll see here's a server context. And you see all these files get written, write file, etc. And if we scroll up a little bit, where all these write files are. It tells you this new web context, website one, has been created. And hopefully down here, or maybe a bit further up, you will see another context being created called website two. If we now go back to the files, you'll see that website one and website two now have two WebMs. These are now in the parlance of Tomcat and um, J2E apps, um, the contexts. So they're individual applications that have their own settings. So let's see how that works. So if we go to website2.dev, reload this one again, you see that it says website2 and website1. If we now go to the Lucy administrator, you see admin.cfm, you'll see that there's no password set, but we did set it. Of course, we set it for the server, and here's our password, which manages everything. But here's our web that hasn't been set. Let's again set a, a default password. Actually, a quick tip. So if you're going to be creating new new uh, context, you might want to set a default password for them. So 
all these password managers trying to be handy and helpful. So if we actually can go to security and password, you have various different uh, settings. But you can set up the default password for all web administrators. I'm going to set a default password, which means that any time I create a context, it's got a default password. So, no one's, so I am pretty safe there. So let's go back to the web. And this web now has a default password, but this web is this web administrator is specifically for website one, right? So if we go in here, it, it remembered where I was. If we go to the regional, you see that it's getting the def default setting. But let's say that website one is actually a UK based website. Uh, I know that's crazy talk, but let's put here at GMT somewhere. GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. I don't know what it says, etc. Hmm. Interesting. Let's just leave it to GMT. Oh, let's go to London. Mean time, Greenwich Mean Time. Let's update that. And now, if we went to um, the website, what we could see is the time is going to be different, right? It's going to be 11 o'clock. And here you can see that the time for the, the Lucy date time is 4 o'clock. And the server is actually New York time. So there's a difference between the server and the web, the actual local time. So this is for quite handy to have completely different things. And this is the same thing across the board. So if I created a, uh, let's do a cache just because I don't have a database running at the moment. I'm going to do my um, object cache. Right? I have a object cache for this web. If I were to go to web two, it will now ask me to log in. It's a completely different domain. It's a completely different site. But I can now log in and see that I have no cache settings. All the settings are very specific to this site. So caches or data sources or anything like that will be just specific for this site. So for example, mail servers will be specific for this site, unless I did it in the server context. So I hope you understand that, that now you have the server, which is defines a default. So if you created a data source for everyone. So for example, which data source as a hosting provider would you provide for all your clients? It might be like a list of countries or, I don't know, currency exchange that you'd like to provide for everyone. You could create that in the server. But of course, the client-specific data, you wouldn't create a data source that everyone has access to or a mail server that everyone has access to. It'll be something very specific for that site. So hopefully this has clarified a little bit the difference between the server and the website administrators and how those two are different and how you can host two different sites, or not just two, but many sites with individual contexts.